I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Yeah. Presentation. Thank you. Today we are going to talk about server-driven UI with uh, epoxy. Uh, this is, um, let's say, a new approach that uh, uh, started to replace a traditional client-driven uh, UI approach. Uh, we will talk about uh, differences, uh, what benefits we have uh, in server-driven UI, how it can be implemented, what tools can be used. This presentation can be interesting for people who did not have a chance to work with uh, server-driven UI or has uh, very little uh, experience and to want to enrich their knowledge, or maybe for people who already has very big experience, but maybe want to, to hear something new, something interesting to see how it can be implemented using different tools. Let's start with uh, traditional client driven UI architecture. Uh, imagine we have an uh, application that shows uh, restaurant details uh, and different information so for the restaurant. Photo, title, rating, distance, uh, any information that is related uh, to restaurant and to what it can be displayed for it. You know that usually uh, on Android uh, we have uh, some layout uh, with placeholders, with views that will contain our information. For example, photo, title, rating, distance, uh, uh, button, check menu, and some other views. The response from backend may look, li may look like something like this. This is a flat JSON with different information. We receive it from the backend, uh, URLs, different values, titles, uh, strings, and uh, display them in corresponding placeholders. Uh, when we set all items, we will see something like this. This is the old approach. We, many of us, or maybe all of us, uh, we're using it, uh, but it has some limitations. And due to this limitation, we needed uh, to redeploy our applications more often that we wanted. What changes would require us to create new application versions and make redeployment to Play Market on Apple Store? What if we want to change view position? For example, to, uh, to show reserve table with these time slots about check menu button. Uh, how can we do this with uh, our traditional layout? Of course, we can try to find views, remove them dynamically to add them, but this is some kind of headache. And uh, I'm not sure that many uh, of us uh, uh, liked to use this approach uh, to solve this issue. What if we want to add additional view? Can it be easily made? No, we need to make another application version and redeploy it. What if we need to change localization stream, for example, somewhere here? It's also not possible without changing the in application. Uh, what if button need another behavior when we click on it uh, to open another screen, not the one which is already hard coded in the application? Also among the limitation that we already have some predefined structure. As it was mentioned on previous slide, uh, it can be in layout file. We have these placeholders and their position is not flexible. As a rule, it's strict with exact order and it's uh, unchangeable. After a few change requests by PMs, by legal or just uh, after some modification of the screen, uh, it may look different with another platform. Uh, for almost uh, all projects, we have both iOS and Android applications, uh, but with some time, they don't look the same way as it was at the very beginning. Uh, it can be due to different speed of uh, uh, development teams, uh, Maybe because of some issues uh, that uh, are platform specific, etc. So uh, we don't have um, uh, parity with each other, and it can be a problem with some time. How new server-driven UI can solve all this issue? 
let's talk about uh, their concepts. First of all, our screen should be split into some logical parts. Let's name them sections. So we have on the screen photo section, we have about sections, we have small section, button sections, and reserve table sections. This is a small pieces from which our screen consists of. And backend will send us information to client side as before, but the response will look like a bit different. Uh, it's not flat JSON anymore. It is also split into sections. Uh, each section has a type. Uh, in our current example, it's photo sections, about sections, etc. Each section has its own fields required to display the information. For photo section, we need just the URL. For about sections, we need uh, more values. For button sections, we need title and some actions. The behavior for the button of what it should do when we click on it. About actions, we will talk uh, in the presentation a bit later. And for the reserve table sections, this one. The main rule for server-driven UI, that client should display exactly all the information that backend sends. All the fields, all the values that backend sends to client side should be displayed and in the exact order. So if backend send sections in this order, they should be displayed exactly in the same order. It's very important because it uh, gives a uh, backend team uh, very much resp uh, responsibility and flexibility how this information will be displayed on client side. Uh, on a quick glance, it's not very, it can be not very clear how it will solve uh, client limitations. Let's take a look at them, how all this limitation can be solved with uh, server driven UI. So, first one, we don't need predefined structure on our screen anymore. All the UI information that will be displayed on our screen will be directly uh, sent by the backend. The order of these UI elements and the information inside of them. So if uh, backend sends this information in this order, we will display it here. If backend doesn't send some section to us, we will not display it. If some value is empty, we will not display that empty. For example, if distance value will be null here, we will not display it on the client side. Uh, the main rule, again, we display everything that backend sends to the client side. How we can change the issue if you want to change the view position. As you guessed, backend just need to send sections in different order and that it, that's it. Different order and they displayed in different order without any changes on the client side. To add additional view, it's not a big problem anymore. Backend just need to send additional section additional button information and we will display this button which will have uh, some its own action what it needs uh, what it needs to do when we tap on it uh, problems with localizations uh, can be also solved uh, very easy for example if you want to change this string backend can just replace its reserve table sections by the new one with the updated title, no changes on the client side. And for buttons, we can easily change its behavior. We just replace the old action, which opens URL somewhere in the web view by another the one which open native screen. So this is a really great approach that uh, allows uh, client side to have a lot of flexibility and uh, not to be strictly tightened to, to structure which it has. Uh, you can see the different sections have different information inside of it. What information can be said for each, uh, can be sent for each of sections, how much customizable it can be. Uh, let's take a look at button. On our previous slide, we had only type, 
title and pattern style with action. What uh, else can we add uh, there? If it is needed for applications, backend can also send pattern with. For example, it can be wrap content or full with for the whole screen. We can define button size, medium, how large uh, it should be. We can also define font for the button. We can also define screen alignment. If it is not full width, it should be in the middle of the screen. Uh, it should be aligned to left or right. So it can be defined as uh, much detail as you want. Just uh, depends on your need for any type of your section, you can define different attributes for your sections. You can also have such non-visual visual sections uh, as space sections with uh, some abstract 20 units heights. It means that the distance between elements on your screen uh, should have some 20 units. It can be pixels, density pixels, or uh, any other distance that is measured by units. Uh, I wrote units intentionally because it uh, uh, may depend on your units of that is um, defined by your projects, uh, uh, how it should be treated on Android. It can be one size, on iOS it can be another size, etc. So sections can be different and they can contain different informations. What are advantages of server-driven UI? First of all, native developers are happy. Why, why they're happy? Because they don't need to implement uh, some UI logic on the client side. They don't need to write uh, some conditions uh, to have uh, a very complex structure for big uh, for big screens to make something visible invisible etc the logic is always straightforward to display everything that backend sense in the exact order that backend sense and usually the whole screen is recreated from scratch uh, so when backend sends the response uh, client side just replaces all the sections so that we are drawn before by new sections. It sounds strange, but backend developers are also happy with this approach. It was a surprise for me when I started to work with this approach, but uh, we have fewer UI bugs and backend developers know exactly that if they send something, it will be displayed on client side. If it is not displayed on client side, it means that they don't send this information, that it is empty. Uh, we don't need uh, to check on both sides who sends or who doesn't display this uh, information. So it's really easy logic. It's really straightforward. Client side displays everything and uh, backend can manage uh, uh, everything that uh, will be displayed on the client side. Project and product managers are happy because, first of all, both native and backend developers are happy and some changes can be implemented much faster than before. A-B tests can start faster. Not all A-B tests, but such A-B tests uh, uh, that uh, contain different copy, different UI uh, uh, position of your views on your screen. So this can be implemented without uh, uh, help of native developers. So it can be easily configured configured on backend side and you get it at once. You don't need to redeploy you don't need to redeploy your applications. Small changes can be delivered during hours, not days. So if it's just a copy or position of elements or adding new existing uh, component, it can be easily added on the backend side. And that's it. You need to deploy just backend changes, uh, nothing else. UI screens on the client side are very generic. Uh, by default, they are empty. They don't have any information and a client will display all the information that will be sent uh, by the backend. So we will have, um, as a rule, empty screen and that's it with some common logic that is present in all screens. All UI elements are automatically reusable on other screens. If you implement it, for example, button section once, it can be 
uh, used on any screens by the backend and by the client side. Uh, when you implement it once, backend uh, can just uh, add uh, it in its response and client side will see it on corresponding screen. That's it. UI state is immutable. What it means that any client screen can be recreated from scratch. It contains all the information needed to display, uh, to be displayed on a screen. Uh, as you saw on previous slide, we have JSON that contains all the information and based on it, we can easily recreate the screen uh, anytime. We don't need to save state of screen additionally. It's already saved uh, uh, in backend response. If uh, application uses some uh, caching mechanism, it's enough uh, to load that uh, response from cache and display it uh, on client side. Of course, there are disadvantages. Uh, new developers uh, don't know how, uh, uh, what way the screen will look like, what is present on it. Uh, as it was mentioned, UI screens are very generic and they are empty. So if uh, newcomers don't read some documentation or don't launch the application, they don't know what will be displayed on the screen. It's empty. It has nothing. It has some uh, processors that uh, will display information when it is received from the backend. But until then, if you look into the code, it's empty. <laughs> there is nothing there. There are also some tricky things to save local UI state. For example, if you have expandable text, uh, when you click on it, it expands. Uh, it shows additional lines. Uh, this state, to, uh, in order to save the state, you need to implement additional logic. It's uh, a bit more complicated uh, comparing to traditional uh, client-driven UI, but it's also, but still, it's solvable and uh, it's not a big deal comparing to all advantages that we have with server-driven UI. Uh, Server-driven UI is applicable for such type of, of applications as travel applications, health applications, shop applications, social networks, online banking, uh, any kind of applications that have recycled view and backends that send information to the client side. And it's not applicable for offline applications. Uh, it's clear that if it is offline, it doesn't have backend, so we cannot have server-driven UI because we don't have server that sends any information. And that's why we use uh, traditional approach. It's not applicable for games. Uh, if uh, it is video game, it has a totally uh, different approach to display the information, or even if it is uh, some even if T3 uses some existing UI components, still, as a rule, it's not server driven and it's uh, not well applicable for such type of applications. For music and video players, uh, server driven UI is not also applicable because we don't need that dynamic UI. A UI for music and video players or other similar application uh, does not change. So we don't need to use this approach for this application. It was mentioned before that we recreate the whole UI screen when we receive a response from the backend. And uh, maybe some of you ask the questions. Uh, uh, is it possible that screens will blink when we replace all UI, which was shown before, by another UI, which we create when we receive response from the backend? What if user scrolled somewhere and we replace the UI? Uh, can scrolling position be lost or not? What about performance? Um, how it will work uh, if screen is big enough? Uh, will user notice this performance delay or even application not responding issues? Is this approach applicable if our lists are endless or we have pagination? The answer is yes, we can use server-driven UI. There are different uh, tools uh, that can solve these issues. So one of them is uh, epoxy. Uh, just to clarify, it's not the only tool that can be used. Among them, you can use SwiftUI, 
uh, for iOS, you can use Jetpack Compose for Android, uh, but uh, Epoxy is really flexible and a good tool for server-driven UI. What is Epoxy? This is a library developed by Airbnb. It's available on Android and iOS. Some of you know that Airbnb is a travel company, it's a booking company. How, uh, uh, how is it related to server-driven UI? Very simple. They started implementing server-driven UI for their applications, and they understood that existing recycled views that are present on Android, they're missing a lot of functionality to make uh, their screens um, flexible enough, to make them performant, uh, and to make them generic enough. And they started implementing the additional layer. They built their library on top of recycle view. Uh, and uh, after some iterations, uh, they created a library that can be used uh, by anyone. Epoxy consists of two main components. First one, epoxy model. Epoxy model, it uses to describe the view which is present on the UI screen. In our case, it can be, uh, it will be any sections. Every sections uh, that we will use uh, uh, in demos uh, and uh, in the presentation is epoxy model. Epoxy model always represent a single view. Also, we have epoxy controller. It's very similar to recycle view adapter, but it has uh, its own implementation. And so the one optional, uh, but recommended epoxy recycle view. It was, uh, ex it extends recycle view. It's uh, adds some functionality and uh, makes the developer life a bit easier. Uh, to clarify, it's optional, but it's recommended to use. That's why it was marked sort, but optional. But the two main com components are still epoxy model that represents a view and epoxy controller that is very similar to recycle view adapter. Uh, let's compare what we have uh, when we use recycle view and we have uh, and when we use epoxy. Uh, in layout file we use recycle view. Uh, if we want to use epoxy, we will use epoxy recycle view adapter or controller. Uh, I already said that recycle. Uh, we need to implement custom adapter that extends recycle view adapter with our holder described in uh, our adapter. We also need to implement uh, a few uh, functions, uh, get it in count, or create view holder, and bind view holder. They need to create our view and to set items uh, for this particular view. And usually, uh, we have some our functions, set items that uh, set the information required to display all these uh, views to inflate uh, views and to display them in our list. For epoxy, we have controller that must be uh, extended, uh, that must be inherited from epoxy controller. And we need to override only one method, build models. We can also add here some set items. Uh, usually, we add uh, this uh, for simplicity and for for let's say for for easy logic. In build models function, we need to create list of our epoxy models. Uh, as I already said, epoxy model represents a single view. If we have a list of the same items, for example, as in recycle view, we have a list of epoxy models. We generate them and we add to epoxy controller. Uh, the good thing that we build these models in the background. So this function is invoked in background thread. It doesn't impact the UI thread, so there are no performance issues with that. And this is example of uh, epoxy model. It uh, looks like very similar to this part of recycle view adapter. I already said that uh, every epoxy model represents single view. 
So let's compare what we have here. We have data class text model. It extends epoxy model with holder. So epoxy model with holder is kind of epoxy model. It has holder. Uh, as we have in recycle view adapter here, we have uh, this holder and here we have uh, this holder. So here uh, we have these two holders that are used in both adapters and controller. We have create a new holder that creates a new holder in epoxy model. And we also create this holder. Uh, we have a corresponding function on create view holder and recycle view adapter. We also inflate our view. In epoxy, we have function get default layout. In custom adapter, we have it on in on create view holder, we inflate this view. We also have on bind view holder and bind function in epoxy model. Uh, in this function, as you remember, we set view values. It's very similar, but the difference that this epoxy model represents a single view. In the recycle view with this default approach, uh, we uh, set values for all items at once. The differences uh, in uh, application code is uh, very little. For recycle view adapter, we create our custom adapter, we set it to recycle view. We set items to it and we call notify data set changed to notified adapters that uh, items uh, are changed and uh, the list should be redrawn. For epoxy, it's really, really similar. Similar. We create custom controller. We set this controller. We set items and we invoke request model build. So I would say that only this uh, line uh, is different. So this is all differences. Why do we need to use epoxy instead of recycle view? Uh, there are uh, default implementation in epoxy that uh, uh, help us to implement server driven UI uh, with uh, a little effort. First of all, uh, if you tried to implement different view types in recycle view, you faced the problem that you need to override additionally get item view type. Uh, you depending on view type that is passed in on create view holder function, you need uh, uh, to inflate different layout and you create its own holder for each view type. I will back to previous slide to show what I mean. In recycle view adapter, uh, this implementation is for only one type of view. If we need another layout, another type of view, we need to implement additionally function that ask um, what type of view, depending on position of uh, item in the list, uh, in on create view holder, we need to inflate different view with different uh, layout. And for another view, we need to implement another holder that will be used with this particular uh, new view, new type of view that we are going to use. In epoxy model, uh, implementation for each view is encapsulated by default in epoxy model. What I mean? You can see here that we have epoxy model that contains all the information required to display all the information only for one type of view. If we need another type of view, we create another epoxy model. And it by default will be placed in different file. What about smooth animation? It can be implemented by recycle view in case if we implement defutil callback, some uh, additional feature that uh, recycle view has. Uh, epoxy has smooth animation in list by default. When we call notify data set changed, recycle view can reset its scroll position. In order to keep scroll position, we need to add some additional logic. It's implemented by default in epoxy. 
in recycle view, if we are going to have different type of views, or we decided to uh, to move this logic to that uh, is related to view to another methods, we need to to create another architecture. In epoxy, uh, this is default behavior for each view. We create its own epoxy model, and it's very convenient. I've mentioned here defutil callback, something that allows uh, us to have uh, smooth animations. Uh, I will quickly remind you what it is. Uh, we need to implement defutil callback, uh, actually to implement class that extends defutil callback with a few functions that have logic. Uh, these functions check if items are the same into lists, uh, if they have the same content or not. And uh, after this implementation, uh, when uh, we pass another a list to our recycle view adapter, it allows to have smooth animation. So you can see that uh, items change their position smoothly. So user can uh, understand that something happened, that uh, uh, some uh, items were swapped, that they changed position, maybe some values, etc. So defutil callback is required to have this uh, smooth animation. And uh, this functionality is implemented by default in epoxy. Now it's time for a little demo. I created an application where I mocked uh, responses uh, from the backend in order to show um, all the power of server driven UI approaches and uh, epoxy. It will have a different, uh, it will have different information on our screen. It consists of four uh, sections. On the screen, you can see photo section. It has about section. It has resource table section, and it has uh, video sections. Uh, why I decided to, to add a video section uh, to show you that uh, even when we can send us another response and the whole UI is recreated, video is not stopped. It is, is not stuck somewhere. It doesn't start from the beginning and it continues playing smoothly. So this is also mocked behavior. Uh, when I will tap on next or, or previous or initial buttons, it will emulate new response from the backend. Uh, so it means uh, that backends send us new response at this time. Uh, what are use cases for server-driven UI? Uh, as already said in the beginning, imagine we have applications that shows information for a restaurant. Some information for restaurant can be displayed at once, uh, photo, about, some video maybe, but the information, if some tables can be uh, bookable, uh, can be resolved, uh, it may take some additional time to get this information from third party provider. And if we don't want uh, to have all screen to be in loading state, uh, we display some information at once and some information will be shown later. So imagine uh, we have initial, respo initial response from the server and with information that it is in loading state. And after some times, usually in a few seconds, we receive response from the backend. And now it says that we have some avail available time slots. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, video was not interrupted. One more time, I will uh, go back to previous step loading. And when we receive new, uh, new data from the backend, video was not interrupted. It's still playing from the same moment. Even uh, when we try to recreate the whole screen from scratch, when we try to recreate all the UI elements, Epoxy library applies its diffing algorithm. It checks uh, the content of each section of uh, uh, each epoxy model and understands that some section were not changed. For example, photo section, about section, and video section. So they don't need to be replaced. But this section uh, changed its content and uh, epoxy replace it this section. 
Um, you can say that not all applications have uh, such behavior that we show initial response from the backend, and after some time, uh, we receive additional response uh, with additional information. Yes, but your application can have, uh, for example, some caching mechanism. Uh, even if your application gets the whole response at once, uh, you need some time to load it. Uh, imagine the situation that you receive this initial response from your backend, you moved uh, previously to previous fragment, and uh, you decided uh, to open screen uh, the same screen again. You display your information that was uh, kept before. Here it is. So this can be loaded from cache and meanwhile you are making request to your server to get updated information. For example, about booking tables or any other sections. And uh, in a few seconds, you just receive a new response from your server that, that unfortunately you cannot reserve a table right now. Please check again later. And again, the video was not interrupted. It didn't stuck, etc. And now I will emulate other responses from backend, how, uh, what it may look like. Uh, for example, what if we decide to move video sections above reserve table section? It was easily moved here. Uh, you could see uh, you could see animations that uh, sections just swapped uh, uh, their position. Video still playing. What if we don't need photo section at all? Yes, we can easily remove it. And uh, as you can see, scrolling position was not reset. What if we decide to move video uh, sections on top of uh, our screen and move back our photo section? Yes, it can be easily done. We still keep scrolling position, video is still playing, and everything is very smooth. If he can go back if needed, if needed to our initial state. So I just state, I just press initial button and all sections changed all their position. Uh, let's take a look uh, how response, backend response is converted to UI that we have on the screen. Uh, we have this kind of response uh, that you could see before. Uh, the new field that is added in each section, it is ID. Why we need ID? It is required for different algorithm to understand that some section changed its position. Uh, so uh, in a diff util callback function, uh, let me uh, show you when we implement if we implement it manually we need to implement our items the same and in this function we also compare by some by some parameter usually by id the same we need uh, for epoxy to let it know that uh, some section are still on the same place or they change it position so the response you so before, but with additional ID field. We map it to some details in domain layer. Uh, usually it's some data classes uh, that extend uh, some interface, let's name it section. And we have the whole response, response which contains uh, the list of these sections. You can see that each sections implement this interface. Each section has its own ID. And some of section may have, it in, uh, have the same set of parameters, photo section and video section. Both of them have the URL. Why we need uh, different section and different DTOs, uh, you will see now. These DTOs are mapped to epoxy models in the UI layer. They look oh, very similar, but with small differences. How they are mapped? We pass all these parameters, ID in, and URL in both models. Uh, 
Uh, this is epoxy model. Let me remind you, epoxy model withholder. This set ID required for epoxy to apply different algorithm. Each of these epoxy model has its own layout. You can see different layout for photo section and video sections. And you have different behavior in bind function. For photo model, we use glide to display this um, image. We load it uh, using URL and uh, place it uh, into some image photo. For video, we use some video tools and we show the video here. Of what, uh, what about resort table sections? What it would look like? So the same idea, we pass all the parameters that we have in backend response. Uh, we have them in corresponding DDO sections and we create epoxy model with all these uh, values, just one-to-one -one mapping. If you ask why uh, cannot we map backend response uh, to UI, we can actually, but you know that in clean architecture, we usually have data layer, domain layer, and UI layer. So it's just additional layer and some business logic can be applied to these DTOs if needed in domain layer. So this is DTOs, uh, uh, after all, come to UI and they are mapped to epoxy models. We have these fields and we set all of them without any conditional logics. So we set title, we set subtitle, we set message and we set time slots. If something is empty, it is not visible, it is gone. For example, in this case, error message is that uh, some tables uh, cannot be bookable, etc. It's now, it is not displayed. But reserve a table and choose available to time slot, they are present and they are displayed. So everything is managed by the backend. It sends all the values that uh, client need to display. And the logic on client side is very straightforward. We need to display everything that backend sends to us. Um, here I'm uh, going to show you the full flow, how, uh, how it starts with user interactions and uh, how it is displayed on the UI. We start with some user interactions or we have any trigger. In our case, we tap on the button next. It, uh, uh, it initiate data update. Client receives backend response. Uh, for simplicity, I use only two sections, video section and reserve table sections. So we receive this backend response, uh, for example, in JSON format. We map this JSON into DTOs. We have video section and we have reserve table sections uh, that implements uh, uh, section interface described uh, earlier. And uh, we have response that contains all these sections in the order that we receive from the back. We pass these details to the UI layer. We get this response here. We have this response type and we set this list of sections to epoxy controller. We set all these values. After that is uh, uh, we could see on previous slide, we need to invoke request model build. It is instead of a notify data set changed that we would use in a, a recycle view adapter. We call request model build. Build models in our custom epoxy control is invoked in background thread. Here we need to build our epoxy models. We create a list of our epoxy models. Get models functions uh, has really simple mapper here, depending on type of our section. When section is video section, we create video model, it's epoxy model with exact uh, parameters mapping. If it is reserve reserve table sections, we create reserve model. Uh, we create these models and we add them to custom controller. So uh, they are added to 
epoch, uh, they are added to epoxy controller here with built-in uh, add function and um, uh, when uh, epoxy library processes all these epoxy models you will see uh, this is on uh, on your screen this uh, ui screen is shown one more time how different responses backend responses will lead to different ui uh, sections that we displayed on our screen if we have video sections and, res uh, and reserve table sections with this information you will see this is uh, you will see this on your screen if backend sends another response with additional information you will see that information is changed video will be still playing from the same from the same position from the uh, for the same place where it is playing. If backend decides to change position of this section on the screen, it can, it can uh, send uh, such response as this. So reserved table sections became, became first, it has new data. So user will see that uh, UI on his screen will be changed this way. And uh, what about user interactions? Before we were talking about on the UI, how it is changed and how it will be displayed in our application. Uh, you remember that buttons, uh, that our buttons had different actions. They can also be defined by the backend. For example, here we have two examples of buttons. They have exactly the same type, but different IDs in order to apply different algorithm uh, with different title with different style this is primary button this is secondary uh, button style and with different actions for example this action can open native screen with some parameters required to open this native screen and this action will open a web view and load this url inside of it let me show you how it will look in our application. So we have another demo. Uh, we have here um, our sections, video, about, and resource table sections. Let's add a few buttons. Here we have three buttons. Each of them has its own logic. Open menu website will open web view and loads menu in the web view. So menu is loaded. You can see it here. Order online. It's another button that opens another URL and it allows you to make an order uh, in the particular restaurant. Maybe there are some issues with uh, website but it uh, actually doesn't really matter uh, for our demo. And we have buttons that opens native menu. So this is native screen that has the same menu that we could see, um, that we could see uh, during opening website. And uh, actually we had a good example that something may happen with uh, website. Uh, uh, PMs decided that we don't need uh, a menu website, it opens slowly, uh, it may not work, etc. We just need only native menu. We need to change the behavior for this button. It should open native screen instead of website. And we can say it's uh, just sends another response and this button with a new title will open native screen instead. And we don't need this additional native menu button anymore. So we'll, we will just remove it. We don't, we don't have it. Um, after some uh, thoughts or maybe during implementing a B tests, uh, it was decided by PMs that we need to change the position of these uh, buttons. It can be easy, easily made. So check menu became second order online became first it can be done just changing position of uh, uh, section 
task parts in the backend response. But uh, maybe there are some cases, some issues with the screen. Imagine that we have such uh, situations that uh, it is not displayed correctly anymore, and uh, PMs decided to open menu not natively but uh, in the web view as it was before so we can easily change the behavior of this button and it will open a menu website as it was at the very beginning it can be easily changed and if needed we can change also the behavior to change the behavior for order online and open menu website for these buttons to swap the actions so this button will open menu website instead and order online will open another website we tap on it and see that first button change its behavior I, uh, it can also be implemented in traditional way, but I will show you a generic uh, server-driven approach. Let me show the same uh, demo, but with uh, uh, little uh, components. We have these two buttons. They, uh, we can uh, backend can easily change their behavior, can uh, change their position, can change their title, can, uh, can change uh, what uh, will be done when we tap on these buttons. How it is implemented uh, using server-driven UI approach. So imagine we have this section response for simplicity only video section. After some time, it sends two buttons, primary and secondary, as you can see in the second demo. So one button and second button. Uh, both of them open the view with corresponding URL sent in action. If we want to change the action for the button, we just send another section with a, another action. It will open native screen instead. And we change the title uh, if needed. If you want, we keep it the same. It just uh, uh, to let you uh, see that it was changed. At least visually, you can see that something changed with this button. That action uh, is changed also for this button, not only the title. Uh, how it can be implemented using epoxy model and uh, server-driven approach. We have two actions which uh, we described earlier. First one opens uh, URL in the web view, and we have actions that opens native screen. We have uh, interface, let's name it action, and it interface, uh, by the way, empty interface. We just needed uh, uh, to have a different uh, uh, to have different type data types in the same list. And we have interface action listener with a single message process action, which that process uh, all these actions. These actions are mapped to DTOs. It uh, looks uh, almost the same way as we map sections into its corresponding DTOs. So this type of action open URL can be mapped to open the view action and this uh, action type open screen, uh, this screen type restaurant menu can be mapped to data class uh, open restaurant menu action with its action. All these uh, data classes have all the information needed to, uh, to process that actions. Uh, on the client side. We have epoxy model and two additional parameters which we pass to this epoxy model. Not only the title for the button, but also action and action listener. Uh, we set the title for our button and on click listener, we just call action listener process action with this action very generic. It, it is only interfaces, as you can see, action listener and action. Action listener and action. Uh, our view, our epoxy model doesn't know what will happen when user uh, clicks on this button. 
uh, it's really generic and it's also managed by the backend. So when user taps on button, uh, this on click listener will be invoked and process action will be called for action listener. We can implement some action processors that implement this action listener interface. Uh, again, I uh, used here a simple mapper to show how it can be implemented. And depending on action which we have uh, here, open a view action or open restaurant menu actions, we will open corresponding screen. It will be web view or menu. This way server can manage what actions uh, will be uh, done on client side without any changes on client side. Uh, can server driven approach uh, be even more generic? Yes, we can go further. In our previous uh, examples, uh, our screen had one common container and uh, we placed all the sections we receive from the backend in the single container. Uh, server can also send different containers and corresponding sections for those containers. For example, we have this screen. It can be logically uh, split into three containers, nav, main container, and floating footer container. And for each of these uh, container in backend responses, we will have its list of sections that needs to be displayed in its container. So backend sends not only list of sections, but sends container and list of section for it. Container and list of section. Container and list of section. If some container is not needed, for example, floating footer, it will not be sent by the backend. And uh, uh, interesting thing, as you can see, floating footer, it means that it uh, will always uh, stay on top of the, on the screen. It will not be scrollable and will have this information. But the same information can be placed inside of main container. For example, if in main container, we will have footer sections here, it will be displayed between title and uh, home detail sections. So these all parts are really reusable. Uh, this is small bricks, uh, pieces of bricks that can be used by applications to display any information uh, on any screen. This is the end of my presentations. And I'm open to your questions.